Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, brought to you by Livewire Markets. My name's Eddie Orchard, and today we're looking at five bulletproof growth stocks. They've had a stellar year in 2020. The question is, can they continue the run? To help me discuss that, I'm joined by Bob Desmond from Evans & Partners and Joe Mager from Lake House Capital. Joe, I'll start with you. Netflix, it's the world's biggest online streaming service, 200 million users, and I heard they've just got the new Beckham documentary. Buy, hold, or sell? Uh, it's a hold. Look, I love Netflix's content, their competitive position, management team, willingness to reinvest, but I don't love the balance sheet and it's expensive against where it's been historically. Bob, everyone was supposed to be wor uh, working from home in the first half of 2020. Netflix added 26 million subscribers. Buy, hold, or sell? Um, I'm going to go totally agree with Joe on this one. I think uh, terrific business model, love the network effects, the scale, uh, but on valuation grounds and also cash flow, I'm probably going to go hold on this one. Alibaba, its Ant IPO was going to be the IPO to break all records, but it just got pulled by the Chinese government. Buy, hold, or sell? I'm going to go hold on this one. I think it's an incredible business. Love the, Again, love the network effects, huge scaling still to come, unmonetized uh, business, really long-term thinking management. I'm just going to go hold on this one. I don't really like the governance structure around the VIE structure, and also they don't expend stock options. So when you adjust for that, it's probably not as cheap as it initially looks. So I'll go hold. There's a lot of superlatives for Alibaba. 750 million users, active users. Is it a case of too big to fail or buy, hold, sell? Uh, I'm going to say sell. So appreciating a bunch of things Bob said, but I'd say governance at Alibaba is particularly poor. I think when you look at historically how things went with Alipay and the way it felt like they more or less stole or there was some confusion with Yahoo about their stake in that. Uh, and I think the way that the Ant IPO got pulled, um, whether or not it's a governance issue, it doesn't bode well. And Ant's a third owned by Alibaba. We all love listening to music. Spotify debuted as an IPO in April 2018. Took a few years to get going, but in the last 12 months is up around 100%. Buy, hold, or sell? Uh, hold for me. Um, great platform, growing market, and I think in the long run they're going to capture a lot more value and within the the profit pool than people appreciate, but it's it's hard to place for me where the business is going to be in five to ten years, and that gives me pause. Bob, Spotify, are you dancing to a different beat to Joe, or buy, hold, or sell? I'm dancing to a different beat on this one. Uh, I do love the, the platform myself personally, but 43 billion market cap, probably only going to get to profit be three years out, 300 million. Valuation is very rich, and I, I do think there's competition there as well. A lot of other platforms will be vying for that content, so I'm a sell on Spotify. We've asked you to both bring along a global stock that you think is resilient and prime for growth. What's your option? I think the most resilient stock we have in the portfolio is Aon, which is kind of a mixture of insurance broking and consulting. I really like that. On the downside in recessions, you get flat organic growth, very resistant. It's 80% uh, 80, 80 recurring revenue, 95% retention rates, so really sticky, high margins, 29%. But obviously, as the economy recovers, you're going to see better employment, better fixed asset coverage. So that'll get better organic growth. They've got a merger coming with Willis. We probably can take out 5 to 10% of costs. So that's probably the most resilient business we've got in the portfolio now. It's been a pretty rough, rough year for most investors, Joe. We've had pandemics, we've had recessions, and the recent US election. What's one Other than that, it's been pretty smooth. <laughs> What's one company you've got that's going to ride through that? Uh, so Amazon. We love the cyclical and structural side of the Amazon thesis and, and the different parts of its business. So. In the short run, there's been a huge boost for the e-commerce business, but we think that's a, a structural pull forward of demand, not just a cyclical bump. But then if you look at AWS, Amazon Web Services is the highest margin part of their business. And while that's taken a short term hit because customers are spending a bit less, the reality is that it's pulled forward cloud adoption. And we think all companies are going to be thinking more seriously about distributed computing than before. And over the span of two, three, five years, that's going to treat them very well. They've had a cracking 2020, but what lies ahead is anybody's guess.